Morgan Stanley Research has recommended that Forex traders go long in the US dollar ringgit as it forecasts the local currency to be even weaker against the greenback for the whole of 2019. Morgan Stanley is expecting the ringgit to average at 4.2 against the dollar in the second quarter, before drifting to 4.22 in the third quarter. The ringgit is seen regaining some strength in the fourth quarter, again at an estimated 4.2 average. The research house expects the ringgit to only gradually strengthen next year, with quarterly forecasts of 4.18, 4.17, 4.16 and 4.15 against the greenback in the four quarters in 2020. At press time, the ringgit is trading at 4.1645 versus the dollar. The local currency has been hurt by equity outflows and the resilience of the US dollar, as well as jitters amid the escalating US-China trade war. There has also been some pessimism following the announcement of the OPR cut last week. Investors are now waiting for the announcement this coming Thursday on GDP figures for first quarter. RHB Research said in a note today that it is expecting GDP growth to ease to 4.3% year-on-year after improving to 4.7% in the fourth quarter of 2018. Lembaga Tabung Haji recorded a net profit of 440 million ringgit in the first quarter of 2019, following the successful completion of the restructuring and rehabilitation process that it carried out at the end of last year. Quarterly revenue totaled 623 million ringgit. According to the Pilgrims Fund, its financial position also strengthened further, with total assets exceeding total liabilities of 1.2 billion ringgit. It also saw improved portfolio investment performance, as well as overall healthy quality of assets after the impairment was made in 2018. Meanwhile, more than 19,000 new savings accounts were opened during the quarter, bringing the total number of depositors to 9.3 million. It also recorded new savings of 4.3 billion ringgit, while withdrawals accounted for 4.6 billion ringgit. Looking ahead, Tabong Haji expects its revenue to continue to increase from second quarter onward, with the issuance of Suko by Urus Harta Jama, which will provide a return of almost 800 million ringgit a year, and the implementation of a new investment adjustment process. Loop Holding, which owns the Tea Life brand, has confirmed a Bloomberg report that it is planning for a listing on Bursa Malaysia potentially next year. CEO Brian Liu told the HTV that the firm is standing by its plan to go public by 2020. However, he added that at this point, there is no certainty and there is always room for some changes along the way. Citing sources, Bloomberg had reported that Loop was looking to raise up to 300 million ringgit via its IPO. It said the company has engaged corporate advisors for this exercise and that the firm is considering seeking a valuation of as much as 1 billion ringgit. Lu was unable to confirm the valuation sought nor the IPO portion, pending final recommendations from Loop's advisors. Back in 2017, Lu told The Edge that he was looking to list the business by 2020 and rapidly expand to open Tea Life outlets in 1,000 locations worldwide or total group revenue of over 1 billion ringgit. Cicera Group will partner up with a Korean company to explore commercial possibilities in Malaysia's LED lighting market. In a bursa filing, the group said that it had entered into a three-month MOU with KREMS on May 11th to enable LED lighting production, infrastructure development technology exchanges, information exchange on the development of LED lighting products and the joint marketing of said products. The plan is for the JV to set up an international LED lighting products business based in Malaysia for future growth momentum, as well as boost the economies of Malaysia and South Korea. The MOU is not subject to shareholder or regulatory approval. KREMS is a Korean company that specializes in producing LED lights for products such as car headlights, computer monitors and laptops. Tomei wants to convert its My Diamond stores to house its namesake brand Tomei and its niche product brand Gold Heart amid the tough market it finds itself in. This comes after a year where its earnings slumped 70% on lower sales volume and profit margins. Group MD Dato Eng Yingping says the group has decided to discontinue the operations of its My Diamond stores by third quarter 2019, which will result in the closure of the remaining four stores under the brand. Although geared towards the urban and younger market, he says My Diamond's offerings have been overlapping those offered under Tomei and Gold Heart. He adds that the group has too many brands to juggle with and that My Diamond's contribution to the jewellery chain operator's revenue is minimal. 
My Diamond will, however, remain a collection brand.